You know the expression, if you're not first, then you're last? I think that also is true when it comes down to doing recon for bug bounty hunting or red teaming. Obviously, you want to be the first to get notified if you're a bug bounty hunter because if you're first to find an asset, then you're the first to test it and hopefully you're the first to find vulnerabilities in it. And if you're not first, then obviously you're going to be last or maybe the first to get a duplicate in it. But also if you're a red teamer and you're, I don't know, if you're monitoring a company and you want to just find an asset as soon as it goes up, you can also create a system similar to this that you can always monitor an organization. Before we do this though, you do need a virtual private server. You can use anything like Ninode, AWS, or digital ocean if you want to do what i do you can use digital ocean all you have to do is go down in the description click on my link you get 200 dollars free on me if you are a new digital ocean user you get that 200 dollars. you can follow along and it's super easy all you gotta do is go create hit droplets select the city you want to create your vps in go down below hit ubuntu and probably just get the cheapest server possible for six dollars a month throw in your password and hit create and once that server is created you can log into it and follow along for this video and what i'm going to show you is how you can be the first to get notified when a domain is discovered so this solely relies on your sub finder or whatever source you use it could be search.sh but doesn't necessarily mean that that asset is accessible so in other words a domain may be created or a certificate may be issued for it but it could be internal it could be that the host is not accessible yet so you may have to do second steps or third steps in addition to what i'm going to show you today but i want to keep that in mind so you understand that just because a domain is discovered doesn't necessarily mean that you have access to it and you should also monitor that going forward i'm not going to make a video on this second step if you want to see a video on that drop me a comment and say hey i want a part two and I will make that for you next week. All right, we're gonna jump into this. Now that we have our servers created, we need to talk about the tools that we need for this video. The first tool we need to talk about is a new, and the second one is notify. Notify will come last. Notify is obviously the tool that's going to notify us of what the domains are. And a new is a tool created by Tom Nom Nom. You can find it on GitHub. That's going to show us the difference between two files. And let me show you what that means really quickly. So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at our domains. This is obviously the first scan we have done. It shows us the two subdomains it's found. And then what if we do a new scan, maybe a month later or a couple of days later, and it finds a new domain? How do we make them look the same and see the difference between the two? That's when a new comes in and you can just go cat new domains and we're going to say a new into their old domains and it's going to tell you hey the difference is stage i didn't have that already in domains.txt and now i have added it into that file at the bottom of it but this is the difference so what we can do essentially is we can say hey i want to do this and then use notify which i'll show you in a bit how to use it and then notify is going to send that to us so that's kind of like in a nutshell what a new does it's just the difference between the two different files and it's just very useful to know what is unique and what is brand new what if now we wanted to do this against a live target so what if we want to just run this command right here and we're going to type it into hacker one obviously this hacker one file that i'm doing right here it doesn't exist once this can co comes back and is finished it's going to give us this result right here that has roughly about 20 domains let's make sure these are unique it has about 20 unique domains but what if we run this again and now let's do that one more time i'm going to go back here what if i want to see the new results and i only want to write the new results so now we had 20 we're going to run this one more time it's going to take a few seconds and it's going to give us the list of all the new assets that found that we did not have in our previous hackerone.com file and in just a few seconds now you can see right here that there are four domains that we have found in here that were not in our previous list. And if I do cat hacker one sort you, you can see from 20, we got bumped to 24. That means these four domains were not a part of our original scan. Maybe this scan was a month ago, a couple of days ago, and hacker one just spun these up. But this just shows that four new domains were found, and these are the four that were brand new. So this process is really interesting because this is how you find new assets. Every time you run subfinder and you want to see the new assets, right? But how do we make it so it alerts us the moment this new asset is available through subfinder? Well, that's easy. This is a simplified version of a bot that I have seen. I think a lot of people have tweeted about this. I think Hack Luke has done a tweet on this. Uh, Justin Haddix has done a tweet on this. Uh, it's very straightforward, but I feel like a lot of people don't understand how this works. The way this works is it's going to do an infinite loop, is what I want to call it. It's going to have a condition that says while true. 
that that condition is never going to change. I want you to do the following, and then I want you to wait this many seconds, which is 3,600 seconds, which in, is an hour. It's going to wait an hour and then run it again and just keep repeating itself over and over and over again and give you the results, right? So this is the way you can create a tool and then domains.txt could be the domains for an organization. It could be yahoo.com, yahoo.net, yahoo.cloud, for example, for Yahoo, or you can throw all of your organization's domains in there. I don't recommend doing that, but you can do that in here as well. But also remember, if I didn't mention this earlier, maybe I've said it a million times, just because a domain comes up doesn't mean you have access to it. But it's really good to have this because what you can do is you can feed it to a Nucle template, for example, for DNS stuff to see if there is any subdomain takeovers and you can have HTTPX on top of it and all that stuff. But for this video alone, we're only going to focus on asset discovery. Now that we have this, we have to bring it full circle. What we're going to do is we're going to run a scan. But before we do this, we need to learn how Notify works. So Notify, what it does is no matter what files or what tools you have, whatever is fed into Notify, it's just going to send out right away to your Slack message. It doesn't matter if it's one line, 20 lines, 30 lines, it's going to take all of that and then use Notify to push it to your Slack, your Discord, whatever channel you want to use. I know they support a bunch of different communication channels, but I like to use Discord. It's the easiest. And if you don't know how to use Discord, honestly, it's really simple. You can see right here that I've been doing this for a few weeks now. All I'm doing is every day, every couple of hours you see I get a GM results come out on this site and you can also get access to it for free. But all you have to do is go create a channel and we're going to create hacker one test and we're going to create this channel. Once it is created, we're going to go to edit channel. We're going to go to integrations and create a webhook for it. And once that is created, we're going to rename it to hacker one bot and we're going to copy this link and save it. So now that it's created, we're going to go back into this. And what you want to do is you want to create a, uh, notify YAML configuration. So I'm going to just look for this right here. We're going to put this right in here. And then we're going to just leave the rest the same. The channels could be whatever the channel name is. So for mine is hacker one test. The discord username is whatever you want it to display. So it could be hacker one bot. And then the ID right here is discord because we want to let it know we're using discord. And this is the discord hacker one ID. And the top one is we need to make sure we differentiate this. If you use the wrong thing right here, it's going to look for different information because we're using Discord. It's going to require all of these different information. And we're going to just run this one last time and see what it looks like. For what we're going to do really quickly before we put this back into the bot, because it's going to take an hour for it to run. I'm going to show you how we're going to use Notify. What you have to do here is you want to obviously give it the domain. This is our previous result or our latest results for SubFinder. And then we're going to use Notify and give it a config file. This is a config file that we talked about. You can put it anywhere you want. You just have to make sure you use this PC flag to provide this configuration file if you're not using the default location. And once this happens is what's going to happen is I've removed four domains from our previous result. So it's going to look at the differentiated. It's going to find those four domains. And then immediately what's going to happen is it's going to post them to this channel right here when it says hacker one test as soon as it's done. So we're going to give it a second. It's going to do its thing. And as soon as it's back, we're going to check it out. And there we go. We can see it's posting as we speak right now on Discord. You can see four new domains were found and it's sending this to us. And now this is over. So now if you look at this bot.txt that we created, all we have to do is just have this run the way it is for our domains, and just replace the domains with what we want. So what I ran over here with SubFinder, it's literally the same as you need to put in here for this loop. You can do multiple if you wanted to but it's just to have different ones. And obviously you can create different YAML files. So if you wanted to just create different providers, you can make different channels. For the free ones, you can see that it has all these different channels. All of them have a different configuration, but you can see I'm always monitoring them and posting them for everyone in my Discord to use. But this is obviously an easy, just very, very basic way of creating a loop and having SubFinder look for vulnerabilities for you. And you can obviously run Nucleon on top of some of these tools and have it notify you when it's vulnerable. But again, it doesn't mean that you're going to be the first to find a application once it's changed. So maybe next week, if you want to hear about this, drop me a comment. Maybe I'll make a video on how you can actually do a notify system that notifies you when a web page has changed or if something is updated or a new domain is up. But you got to drop me a comment. Let me know if you want to see a part two and I will see you all in the next week's video. Peace. Wait, 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 wait. While I have you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. So every Monday you get notified when
when I drop a new video. All right, peace. See you next week.